very unique specimen, that is. The finest ship has ever sailed the seven seas. But can you tell me the story in like 30 seconds? No. Th this story is really based on taking part of three albums of Hergé's stories. It's part of Crab with the Golden Claw, it's Secret of the Unicorn, which is where the pirate ship comes in, and it's Red Rackham, which is the buried treasure. It's very much an origin story of his relationship with Haddock. Tintin, by the way. Haddock, Archibald Haddock. <clears throat> Let me just explain who Captain Haddock is. So Tintin is an achiever. He wins everything. He, 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 I mean, he works hard for it, and he's very driven, he's courageous, and he's heroic, and he's unafraid of fear, and he, he gets what he wants. He'll get there in the end. He'll find the answer. Haddock is an underachiever. He gets nothing. He, you know, he, he, he destroys everything he puts his hand to. He destroys everything other people put their hands to, and he makes it a complete mess for everyone. What have you done? A little wee fire in a boat! Well, this is a fine mess. So they're complete opposites, except opposites attract. So they kind of form this relationship and go on this adventure together, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, ends up in all kinds of disasters and triumphs and, and misfortune and, 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 and success. Um, motion cap movies haven't always proved to be successful in... Thank goodness, thank goodness we are not a motion capture film. Phew. We are, this film is an animated film with human performances. Uh, <clears throat> so this is, this is not something you've seen before. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, some motion capture stories don't work and, and, and the technology gets, takes the blame for it, actually. And, and, and in many respects, when any film doesn't work at the box office, it's probably to do with the fact that the character and story isn't working somehow. So it's more to do with the, the subject matter as opposed to the technology involved in creating it, I think. I think that's true. So this, is, this is not a, a, a straight down the line motion capture film. This is not Polar Express. This is not Christmas Carol. It's not that. You know, um, yes, the performances are human, but this is an entirely animated film. What secrets do you hold? What's this? That model ship conceals a clue to one of the greatest treasures in all history. Good boy, Snowy. Imagine you'd be a little boy, you'd just seen the movie and come home to your parents and tell them what the movie is about. What, how would you explain it? Well, it would be hysterical because the movie is going to be so exciting. I think I'd say it's the most amazing adventure. There's this boy and he goes on this extraordinary journey and, and he, he, he's just really positive all the time and he keeps going and no matter what is thrown in front of him, he just deals with it and he even has to deal with this grumpy old man who's, who, who's you know, pulling him back and, and, and then he realizes that the only way he's gonna solve this mystery is by getting this old man to kind of to work with him. and, and I just think I'd be, you know, he's, but this character, this boy, this fictitious boy would be blown away by the movie, basically. Find them. Find them both. Put your hands up. You do know what you're doing, eh? Relax. I interviewed a pilot once. What would you say if you had to describe him in, in three words? Steven Spielberg. Uh, visionary, genius, magician. And Peter Jackson? Uh, I would say, I mean, he's definitely two. I mean, he's definitely two of those three: visionary and genius, and hilarious. They, they, they will continue their collaboration for as long as they can. They've had a great time working together. And so they are already reading the, all the other stories to um, find out the plot for. The oh yeah, we part, well we read all the books um, many years ago, but. We'll probably, on the next movie, we'll probably introduce Calculus. When could the second movie come out then? Um, two to three years, probably, realistically. Excellent. Land! We're not there yet! No! Land! Did you hit anything? Oh dear. Do you feel that you're at the peak of your career right now? Oh no, I never feel like I'm at the peak of my career. I, I, I don't really think of it like that. I mean, I, I, I think you're always looking for the next big challenge, or I, I'm always looking for the next big challenge. And, um, the, you know, I'm very fortunate. I'm directing on The Hobbit at, uh, at the moment as well. So, and, and directing is where, where I, uh, what I'm very interested in doing. So, um, apart from, from the movies that I'm trying to push forward, I'm, uh, I'm building a, 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 a performance capture studio and I want to create my own movies as well. So, so I, I, 
look, life's too short to, to, to think you've reached any, any kind of peak or anything. I will pretend! That young man, what's his name? That's Tintin. I'm sure this must be hard for you now, but if you uh, could you tell me your favorite movie of all time? Oh, of all time. Oh my word, that's such a difficult question. Favorite movie of all time? Wow. No. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. I think um, certainly movies that were very influ influential to me um, and had a lot to do with me being interested in film were David Lean's p pictures. I particularly love um, Brief Encounter and then obviously his greats, Dr. Zhivago and Lawrence of Arabia. I, I actually, one of, one of my favorite films is The Piano, actually. I, I really adore that film. I think it's a beautiful film and, and a, a great, uh, you know, a perfect film in terms of storytelling and character. You know, there's a, there is a, there's a Russian war film called Come and See. Um, why is that? Why is that? It's, it's just the, the, the most moving and profound and realistic view of war, which is terrifying and awful. Go see Tintin. <laughs>